5. Creepy Stories of People Killed by Ghosts There are countless ghost stories out there, and most of the time it's a sighting or a feeling, but nothing much more than that. But the cases on this list get much more dark and evil than your typical campfire tale. They involve real people, real deaths, and possibly even real ghosts. These are 5 creepy stories of people killed by ghosts. Number 5. Malachi Martin Every horror fan will have heard of The Exorcist, but not many know that the priest, played by actor Max von Sydow, is based on a real-life priest by the name of Malachi Martin. Born in Ballylongford, Ireland, Father Malachi Martin was one of four siblings, all of whom became priests, with Martin and another brother also becoming academics. Father Martin got a doctorate in archaeology, oriental history, and Semitic languages. He extended his studies to include rational psychology, physics, anthropology, and also took part in research about the Dead Sea Scrolls. It was when Father Martin went to Egypt in the 1950s for archaeological research that he performed his first exorcism. This fact was adopted into the Exorcist movie as well. By 1958, he was summoned to Rome and worked at the Holy See as a private secretary to Cardinal B.S.J. Around the same time, the Second Vatican Council started in 1962, which distressed Martin greatly. Even though he stayed at the Vatican for a while, the relationship, along with Martin's increasingly vocal views against them, clashed with that of the Church. In February of 1965, he officially requested to be released from the Jesuit order. He left Rome in July and the following year began living in New York City. It was here where he pursued the life of a writer and a freelance exorcist. Among his most famous books was Hostage to the Devil, The Possession and Exorcism of Five Living Americans, which was published in 1975. In it, he had referenced several exorcisms he had participated in, and by 1996 he claimed to have performed over 100 minor and major exorcisms during his entire life. When not writing, he worked closely with paranormal researchers Ed and Lorraine Warren, John Zaffis, and Dave Cosadine. Despite his intriguing life, Martin's death at 78 years old was even more controversial. During his last days, one of his closest friends, CIA agent Robert Morrow, had been driving him to his exorcism appointments. Morrow told the story of how during Martin's last days he performed an exorcism on a young possessed girl from Connecticut. When they arrived at the home, a four-year-old girl approached Martin and an evil voice inside her said, So you're Malachi Martin and you think you can help her. It was odd that shortly after this encounter, Father Martin suffered a fall from his apartment and four days later died at the hospital. Many believe that instead of a natural fall or death, Martin had a strong evil force attached to him during the exorcism of the girl and that this entity pushed him to his death. Just like in the movie based off him, the priest had fallen to his death. There's no absolute proof of this, of course, but judging from his background and the amount of exorcisms that he performed, it's possible there could be truth to the matter. Number 4. Widow Ghost Currently in the small village of Tha Sawang, Thailand, the men are afraid to sleep. For months now, the men in the village have been trying to fight a paranormal entity dubbed locally as the Pi Mei Mai, or the Widow Ghost. So far, close to a dozen strong healthy men have died without any apparent medical reason. The villagers and the family of the men claim that they were all healthy and did not show any sign of sickness at all, but still succumb to death in their sleep. Out of fear their next male relatives might die next, some of the villagers sought the help of a spirit medium to consult the spirit world about what was happening. This medium told the villagers the widow ghost was hunting for several more victims and those who only had one son were more at risk of an unwelcome visit than other families. She added that in order to combat the spirit, families should hang a red shirt outside of their home to help repel the evil. Most in the neighborhood have heeded the medium's advice and hung red shirts even villagers that are non-superstitious have done the same out of respect to their neighbors. Some men even took it further by wearing red nail polish or lipstick as they slept to fool the ghost into passing over them. 
However, at least one man wearing red nail polish in another village succumbed to the same death in his sleep. But is it true the widow ghost is responsible for such deaths? No one knows for sure, but it's an absolute fact that men are dying off at an alarming rate. If it can't be explained by doctors, then it's very possible there's something sinister at work hunting for its next victim. Number 3. Mark and Debbie Constantino Well known for being constantly featured on the Travel Channel's ghost adventures, Mark and Debbie Constantino were primarily EVP investigators. They were often featured on the ghost show to help explain or identify audio recordings of captured spirit voices and ghosts. Married since 1989, it's Debbie who had the gift of attracting spirits, while Mark was a believer in the afterlife but didn't experience any unusual manifestation until after he had met his wife. Eventually, the couple became known in the lecture circuit and the TV exposure furthered their careers. However, behind their strange adventures and fun personalities on the small screen, the two had a volatile relationship. In 2014, Debbie was arrested on charges of domestic battery. She and Mark had a fight over finances and she ended up cutting his arm with a kitchen knife. Several weeks later, Mark and his daughter Raquel were arrested and charged with kidnapping and battery after they pulled Debbie from a car, dragged her and beat her. Mark then strangled Debbie to the point where she was nearly passed out. Both Mark and his daughter were put in jail, but a local judge had granted them bail and they were out on bond. Although they were ordered to stay away from Debbie, apparently it wasn't to be. By then, the couple were estranged and Debbie had been living with two roommates. On September 22, 2015, one of the roommates found their other roommate, James Anderson, dead inside their Reno, Nevada apartment. She called police and also informed them Debbie was nowhere to be found. Cops tracked down her cell phone to their daughter Raquel's apartment. Authorities then knocked on the door and they then heard several gunshots with Mark telling them, give me 15 minutes to gather my thoughts or I'll kill her. The SWAT team tried to negotiate but after three hours they decided to storm the apartment using stun grenades. Inside they found both Mark and Debbie dead from gunshot wounds. Mark had killed her first and then shot himself. It's also believed it was Mark who murdered Debbie's roommate, James. While it's a fact domestic abuse and a volatile relationship surrounded the pair, because of their involvement in the supernatural world, people have speculated whether their job had anything to do with their circumstances. According to various paranormal specialists, spirits tend to haunt, possess, and often cause problematic situations around their lives. Whether it's hauntings or possession in some form, it can manifest and in turn exacerbate an already problematic relationship into one that's extremely violent. Many who believe in the paranormal speculate Mark and Debbie's choice of career might have directly led to their own demise. Number 2. The Iceman's Ghost On September 19, 1991, German hikers Helmut and Erika Simon stumbled across a frozen, dead body high up on the Ostel Alps, close to the Austrian-Italian border. They thought the corpse was that of a recently killed mountaineer, so they informed officials as soon as they could. The body was extracted, along with the various items nearby, on September 22nd. A local archaeologist, Conrad Spindler, examined the body and dated it to be around 4,000 years old, basing it on the items found near the remains. He was well-preserved, and scientists dubbed the finding as Otzi the Iceman, and they estimated him to be around 5.5 feet tall, weighing in at around 61 kilograms when he was alive. Once the body was officially tested, it showed that it was actually around 5,300 years old. The test revealed that Otzi was likely a high-altitude shepherd who was involved with copper smelting, judging from the items he had used with him, as well as analysis of his hair and clothing. He also had approximately 61 tattoos across his body. As for his cause of death, he may have died from exposure, but it was later speculated he might have been sacrificially buried after being killed. Further examination showed that he had suffered cerebral trauma, had an arrowhead embedded in his shoulder, as well as cuts on his arms and hands suggesting a struggle prior to death. 
However, the real mystery behind Otzi's life and existence is often overshadowed by his supposed hauntings and the curse he injects against those who have disturbed his 53 century slumber. Rumors of the Iceman curse began spreading when Helmet, one of the founders of the mummy, fell to his death while hiking in a freak blizzard close to where the mummy was discovered. Shortly after his funeral, Dieter Warneck, the head of the mountain rescue team assigned to find the Iceman, suffered a heart attack and died. Then, by April of 2005, Conrad Spindler, who was the first archaeologist to examine the mummy, died of complications as a result of multiple sclerosis. Prior to these deaths, Rainier Hen, the pathologist who placed the mummy in the body bag using his bare hands, died in a car accident while heading to a convention where he was supposed to give a talk about Otzi. This was then followed by the death of Kurt Fritz, the man credited for uncovering the mummy's face. He died during an avalanche, and he was the only one in his party to be killed. Moreover, Austrian journalist Rainier Hosel, the man responsible for filming the removal of Otzi from his icy grave, died of a brain tumor. Finally, the seemingly last death happened in 2005, when Tom Lloyd died from a hereditary blood disease. Lloyd was the one credited for finding traces of human blood on the weapons and mummy's clothes. He was diagnosed with the blood disease the year after Otzi was found. Today, with all the original people involved now dead, the curse has seemingly stopped. Otzi is currently housed at the South Tyrol Archaeological Museum in Balzano inside a refrigerated room, so anyone can check him out if they dare. Number 1. Curse of King Tut and Tomb of Tamur Mummies and curses go hand in hand, and there's no other more famous than that of King Tut and the conqueror Tamur. King Tut's tomb was first discovered in 1922 by Howard Carter at the urging of his financial backer, George Herbert, the fifth Earl of Carnarvon. On November 12, 1922, Howard, the Earl, and his daughter managed to open King Tut's tomb and found several golden artifacts inside. Legend has it that the night the tomb was opened, all the lights in Cairo went out. More than a thousand people flocked to the site hoping to catch a glimpse of the famous tomb, but it wouldn't be long until the deaths supposedly linked to the curse began. The first to die was Howard's pet bird which was killed by a snake, Tutankhamun's symbol. Shortly after, the Earl himself died from a mosquito bite after it got infected and he suffered blood poisoning. It said his dogs also died on the same night. By 1923, another man involved in opening the tomb, George Gould, also died from a high fever. Then the death toll increased from there. It's said that more than 10 people have passed on as a result of the curse. This includes prominent Egyptologist Howard Carter himself. Some say the death surrounding those who open the tomb are nothing more than just coincidence, but others say it's a direct result of a blatant curse placed there by the pharaoh and his keepers. The fact that King Tut's tomb isn't the only one to bear a curse and resulted in several deaths after it was opened lends credence to the matter. Another famous tomb curse is that of Tamerlan, or Tamur's curse. Although not as well known as King Tut, Tamur was one of the most ruthless invaders the world has ever seen. Coming from the Mongols, he built his dynasty by following the footsteps of the great Genghis Khan. His empire and conquests were nearly as impressive as the Great Khan himself, reaching out to much of today's southeastern Turkey, Kuwait, Iran, Uzbekistan, much of Central Asia, and more. He was known as both a brilliant military leader, a scholar, and a ruthless conqueror. So ruthless, in fact, that the death toll of his conquest resulted in more than 17 million deaths. It's even said that during his campaign, he created a pyramid of 70,000 skulls in northern India, but during his attempt at invading China, he fell ill and died at 68 years old. His tomb was built in Sarmakan, Uzbekistan, and his grave covered with a large jade slab with the inscription and warning, When I arise from the grave, the world will tremble. A second inscription also read, Whoever disturbs my tomb will unleash an invader more terrible than I. The old keepers of the tomb also warned that once the curse was let out, it would take effect within three days. For this reason, Tamur's grave was left untouched for a long time, 
That is, until 1941, when Stalin decided he would pay no heed and open it up. He ordered historian and anthropologist Mikhail Gerasimov to open it up and reconstruct the face of Tamer. On June 20, 1942, he did as he was told and was surprised that the smell of rose, frankincense, and resin enveloped the space. These were the items used to embalm the late conqueror. Two days after opening it up, the Nazi Germans launched an all-out attack on the USSR called Operation Barbosa. It was one of the most ruthless invasions ever launched by the Germans. Even though they never fully invaded the Soviets, the latter suffered massive casualties during the all-out offensive. After months of the war, Stalin began believing the war might have something to do with the curse, and he ordered Tamor's body to be returned to the tomb with full Islamic burial rites. By December 20th, 1942, his body was returned to his grave. Surprisingly, within just a month of this, Operation Winter Storm began the last-ditch effort of the Germans to escape the Soviets. The Germans eventually lost and surrendered to the Soviets in the Battle of Stalingrad. Whether Tamur's curse had anything to do with it is still up for debate. So there were five creepy stories of people killed by ghosts. While some say these deaths are nothing but mere coincidences, there could be something more to them that we just fail to see. Perhaps ghosts can be restless, even vengeful in the afterlife, and on occasion they reach through and take the living along with them. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe to our channel because we have many new scary mysteries coming out every week that we know you'll want to see. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon.